Spirit. Peter realizes that the good news of the gospel is meant for all people, and he proclaims the crucified and risen Jesus. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter began to speak to Cornelius and the other Gentiles. I truly understand that God shows no partiality, but in every nation anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. You know the message he sent to the people of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. That message spread throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John announced, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, how he went about doing good and healing, all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses to all that he did, both in Judea and Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree, but God raised him on the third day and allowed him to appear, not to all the people, but to us who were chosen by God as witnesses and who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one ordained by God as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. <clears throat> Let us say together the words of Psalm 118. <clears throat> Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His mercy endures forever. Let Israel come out proclaiming, his mercy endures forever. The Lord is my strength and my song, and he has become my salvation. There is a sound of exaltation and victory in the times of the righteous. The resurrection of Christ is the first sign, and the eternal assurance of the defeat of death's rule over humankind. A reading from the first letter of Paul to the Corinthians. If for this life only we have hoped in Christ, we are of all people most to be pitied. But in fact, Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have died. For since, since death came through a human being, the resurrection of the dead has also come through a human being. For as all die in Adam, so all will be made alive in Christ. But each in his own order, Christ the first fruits, then at his coming those who, who belong to Christ. Then comes the end, when he hands over the kingdom to God the Father, after he destroyed every ruler and every authority and power. For he must reign until he has put all his enemies under his feet. The last enemy to be destroyed is death. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us stand and say together a song of faith. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. By the divine mercy, we have a new birth into a living hope. Through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, we have an inheritance that is imperishable in heaven. The ransom that was paid to free us was not paid in silver or gold, but in the precious blood of Christ, 
the Lamb without spot or stain. God raised Jesus from the dead and gave him glory, so that we might have faith and hope in God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Christ. On the first day of the week, at early dawn, they came to the tomb taking the spices that they had prepared. They found the stone rolled away from the tomb, but when they went in, they did not find the body. While they were perplexed about this, suddenly two men in dazzling clothes stood beside them. The women were terrified and bowed their faces to the ground. But the men said to them, Why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here, but is risen. Remember how he told you while he was still in Galilee that the Son of Man must be handed over to sinners and be crucified and on the third day rise again. Then they remembered his words, and returning from the tomb, they told all this to the eleven and to all the rest. Now is Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary the mother of James, and the other women that with them who told this to the apostles. But these words seemed to them an idle tale, and they did not believe them. But Peter got up, ran to the tomb, stood and looking in, he saw the linen cloths by themselves. Then he went home, amazed at what had happened. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. May the words of my mouth, the meditation of all our hearts, and every action of all our lives be always acceptable to you, Lord our strength, and our Redeemer. Amen. Well, all right. Hallelujah. Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Okay. But who cares? What's the big deal about it? Well, to begin with, when we start thinking about it, what we have is an amazing story. A man who had died, and, and, and there's no question he was dead. The, the Roman soldiers knew what they were doing. They knew how to kill a man. A man who was dead disappears from the tomb and then is seen again. Kind of an amazing story. It's hard for many people to believe, in fact. Two points I want to make about it. First, as I said, we can be pretty sure he was dead. He was not unconscious and later woke up and walked out of the tomb, as some have argued. The Roman soldiers checked him before the body was taken away, and they knew what they were looking for. Second, and much harder for people to believe, the resurrection, resurrected Jesus was seen by people, not just his close followers. All right, you know, today's gospel lesson could be made up. His, his closest followers could have stolen the body, made up a story, and told lies to everyone around him. That's, that's possible if we only had this account. But as a matter of fact, St. Paul tells us that Jesus was seen by over 500 people. And Paul goes on to stress that many of those people were still alive while he's telling the story, while his, his letter is circulating, many of those 500 are still alive and could be questioned. Now that'd be a hard story to fake. In, in the small, tightly knit community of first century Israel, that would mean that virtually everyone had seen Jesus or knew one of the 500 who had seen him, or at the very least, they knew somebody who knew somebody who had seen him. So the, the story of him being alive and walking around as a resurrected Jesus was pretty well documented. We can be pretty confident that Jesus was resurrected. But that leaves us with the question of why. Why did Jesus re get resurrected from the dead? What difference did and does it make? I, I love this line from Jesus Christ Superstar. When Jesus is praying in the Garden of Gethsemane, he prays to God, you are fine on the what and the where, but not so clear on the why. I think that accurately reflects scripture. 
The reason for Jesus' death and resurrection, or, or maybe more clearly, why Jesus' death and resurrection were necessary for our salvation is not made clear. I mean, certainly it has something to do with forgiveness of sins. It, it says something about our relationship with God. That, that's agreed upon. But scholars disagree about precisely how all of this worked or works. There's no question it does. We're just not sure why or how. Somehow, for some reason, Jesus' death and resurrection unites us to God in a special way. Now, as we're thinking about the resurrection, let's take a, a long step backwards and, and focus for a moment on the other big event, the birth. Why was Jesus born as a human being? Why didn't he simply arrive full grown on the earth? Well, before telling you what I believe, let me em emphasize that I do not believe non-Christians are automatically condemned to hell. In fact, I would argue that the real failure that goes on is Christians who have not adequately shared their faith with other people. Furthermore, allow me to stress in today's uh, political environment that being hateful towards other groups, including other religions, is not Christian. Sharing our faith is fine. In fact, it's more than appropriate. But demeaning and attacking other people based on their beliefs is just not right. But all that said, allow me to go out on a limb and annoy, even anger some people, and say to you, I do not believe all religions are the same. I believe there's an important difference. In fact, I believe that saying all religions are the same is an insult to the other religions, as well as to Christianity. Again, I'm not condemning anyone for not believing as I do. But I have the right and the responsibility to share my beliefs and especially beliefs about the birth and resurrection. All right, clearly, there were and are a number of stories floating around about virgin births. In fact, I remember a girl in our high school who swear, swore it was a virgin pregnancy. And there are a number of stories floating around about resurrections. As I mentioned before, I believe Jesus' story has more validity, more basis in fact than other ones do, but, but there were other stories. The birth and resurrection of Jesus taken together does explain the primary difference between Christianity and other religions. We believe God loves us enough to have become human. That God loves us enough to have lived as a human. God loves us enough to have died as a human. The gods in other religions don't go that far. In some cases, we are told about gods who, who came to earth and wandered around pretending to be human. And in many cases, we hear about gods who spoke to human beings, thereby making them a prophet or a spokesperson. But you cannot find another major religion when Jesus, when God rather, became human. Became human. That's the key. So what? Who cares? What's the big deal? Well, before answering that, let me say again that I fully expect some people to disagree with me, and that's fine. If you want to discuss it, just tell me, and I'll buy the coffee. But it's not an easy answer to what is the big deal. God certainly had the power to simply appear on earth, come walking out of the desert looking like a human being. And certainly God could have simply decided our sins are forgiven without going through such a convoluted process. Now, I know many people believe there was some form of contest going on between Satan and God. A contest within which human beings were held hostage and, and only by Jesus becoming human and dying could that contest be won. Would 
variations, that's the ransom argument. And I know that can be defended from some passages in Scripture. I believe that takes those comments to literally rather than symbolically. And many theologians disagree with me and many agree. I don't believe the contest theory because it seems to me it makes God look less supreme. So what's the answer? I believe the answer to the birth and the death of God, of Jesus, is that God loves us very much. God loves us enough to give us freedom to make our own decisions, even bad ones. God loves us enough to want to be in relationship with us. God loves us enough to want us to choose to be in relationship. God loves us enough to do whatever is necessary to help us make the right choice. Imagine a group of students trying to learn a subject, maybe algebra. Notice the teacher being willing to bend down and help, but help only when asked and when needed. A teacher who is willing to let the students try. A teacher who loves these young people enough to make the sacrifice to make their dreams a reality. Now, take that image of a teacher and multiply it a few thousand times. You would then have a measure of God's love for you. God loves us enough to give us freedom to choose and to offer assistance to help us make the right choice. And also, I believe God loves us enough to deeply mourn when we make the wrong choice. Now there's an interesting thing about this logic. If you spend time with it, if you study it for a while, it actually diminishes the importance of the birth and the death. What is important is God's love for us, for you. His birth and his death are simply indicators, measures of how great his love is. Now, I'm not suggesting we minimize, much less ignore Easter and the resurrection. In fact, I suggest the opposite. We sincerely shout hallelujah and praise God that we, we bask in the wonder of what God did. But even more important, than the event we bask in. We bask in that wonder that God, the creator of the entire universe, loves you personally. 